All right, welcome back. Here we are, another math video. Gave you guys a little break from myself for a little bit. All right, found some uh, videos on youtube.com that were presentable for the 12B class. And then looking at function toolkit videos, uh, that doesn't seem to match up so much with what we're doing. So we're gonna start fresh and we're gonna uh, get you all these uh, instructional videos straight from the source. Uh, function toolkit we're going to break it up into all of the different examples all the different uh, situations so we're going to do a few videos right now for sheet number one which is on quadratics absolute value and radical functions these are all three different types of functions that you have learned already and you just heard the PA uh, system go off, all right? We're giving you the real life experience right here, all right? So we're not editing anything out. We're gonna keep going. Let's do this. Okay, uh, parabolas, they were uh, done in grade 11, and so were absolute value functions, okay? They look very similar to one another. It's just the parabolas are a U, absolute values are the V-shaped, and they both have key points at the origin at zero, zero. And then also we have something that's a little more recent, the square root of x function that goes up and to the right, still has a key point of zero, zero, and you learned that graph in 12a most recently. So what we're going to do is we're going to be graphing transformations of each of these functions right here. And these are things that you've kind of already have learned to graph in, in other courses. So it's kind of like a review of all the different graphs. And then a little later on when we get to sheet two and three, we're going to start to see some functions that are brand new. So let's take a look at these three functions right here. All right, so we're gonna do one example of each. You're gonna see other examples in the upcoming videos. Let's just stick with a parabola for right now. And uh, on the side here, I'm asking you to get the key point, which I've abbreviated because of course I did, KP, domain and range, D and R, X and Y intercepts, and we're going to sketch the graph. Now what I like to do is I like to do a mapping notation first, then get the key point, then sketch a graph, then get the domain and range, get the x and y intercepts, and usually with the intercepts I may have to uh, just fine tune the graph a little bit. And let's take a look at this function right here. Let's do a mapping notation first. They're all going to be presented to you in transformational form. For the most part so what you can do is you can immediately make a mapping notation and with the mapping notation you can plug in the key point which are all zero zeros for this section right here and we can plug that in and get a new key point for this new graph which in this case is going to be negative three positive one so that's a great place to start on the graph okay again you can get all the pieces of information but if you want to do all that first and then draw the graph, it's going to be harder to do things like at the domain and range. Okay, so it's nice to have a little visual right here. So what I can do is I can plot the point negative 3, positive 1. And then you also have to look out for uh, reflections. So in this case, okay, because there's a negative in front of the 2y in the mapping notation, if there's a negative in front of the y, it flips over the x. So this is going to be an upside down parabola. So it's going to look something like that. Now again, okay, when I find my x and y intercepts, I may have to fine tune this graph a little bit. But that's good enough for me to get, well, I've already gotten the key point. The domain and range, not too bad. Okay, domains for parabolas are always real numbers, all real numbers. Okay, it goes infinitely to the left and right, so that's never going to change. The range, however, is going to change. So you can see in this particular example that the range starts at a minimum y value of negative infinity. It goes all the way down to negative infinity, but has a maximum y value at positive 1. And it actually touches that point. It's not a POD or, or a horizontal asymptote or anything. So you can see right here that it should be a square bracket. And we have now completed the domain and range. And that's taken care of. 
The sketching is taken care of, except that we may have to fine tune things. We're going to use some algebra next to get X and Y intercepts. You're only asked to get intercepts in some of the questions. So if you're not asked, you don't need to do that, all right? But in this case, okay, we are asked. So let's get the y-intercept first. And of course, y-intercept is plug in 0 for x. And you do that into the equation, of course. So if I plug in 0 for x here, I'm going to get something like this. That's into the equation, and then I just use my order of operations. Okay, I'm going to have 0 plus 3 is 3, squared is 9, and then I have negative 18 plus 1 is equal to negative 17, so my y-intercept is 0, negative 17, and I'm probably not going to fit that on the graph. Okay, that's going to go way down somewhere, so I won't bother to, to uh, uh, get that one on the graph. I can just state what it is. And it looks like I do not have room on this slide to do the x-intercept. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take up some time over here instead, some space, sorry, so we can just kind of ignore this for right now. We'll come back to all that in a second. And of course, we have minus 2 outside of x plus 3 squared, and that is plus 1. And if we get x-intercepts, we are going to plug in 0 for y. This is going to be a little bit more complicated. Okay, we have 0 is equal to, uh, sorry, negative 2 outside of x plus 3 squared plus 1. And uh, you could do this in two ways. Okay, you could multiply out the right side, expand it, use quadratic formula. Okay, that could work. All right, we could do that. I'm going to skip all that, and I'm going to just isolate the x. I'm going to bring the positive 1 over, and then I can divide both sides by negative 2. So I get negative over negative is a positive 0 0.5. You can use decimals here. And then I can get the square root of both sides to get rid of that square. So I'm going to get the square root of the right side is x plus 3, the square root of the left side, I have to remind myself that I have to do the plus or minus square root. It basically means that if you were to go backwards, if you were to square both sides, you would get positive 0 0.5, whether it's negative or positive. And then from there, okay, you're going to bring over the minus 3. So you get something like this. And... <laughs> All right. Okay, so we have minus 3.707. That is hilarious. You guys are probably enjoying this very much. But anyway, let's take a look at doing these two x-intercepts right here. And you can see those on the graph. Uh, if I have to adjust the graph a little bit, it looks like I have x-intercepts that are reasonable. And, of course, you can always adjust the tick marks instead to make that work, okay? And it looks like we have everything accomplished. Desmos can be your answer key for all of these questions. So what we're going to do is we're going to look on Desmos, and you can see right here the x-intercepts and the y-intercept down here and once again i apologize for all those announcements but uh that's it okay it's a real life experience we're just gonna do it and uh yeah let's take a look at the other two examples in the next videos